Well, it's a great story because it actually goes all the way back to when I was a middle school teacher in the early 1990s, and I read an article in the Kaplan called Teaching for Conceptual Change, Confronting Students' Ideas. And it was an article about a teacher who asked her students what they thought would happen if they put a thermometer inside their hats and their coats and mittens. And the children were absolutely convinced that the temperature on the thermometer would go up. But she didn't correct them. She took them through this process of confronting them with these strongly held ideas they had. Because after all, we put hats and mittens and coats on to keep us warm. So they thought that's what warmed up the thermometer. So I read that article, and I was just so taken by the teacher's approach and using an interesting question like that to guide student learning that I wrote my first probe, the mitten, the mitten Problem, which is actually in Uncovering Student Ideas, Volume 1, back in the early 90s, and I used it with my middle school students, and sure enough, my students had the same ideas, that the mitten was actually the generator of heat. So from that point on, I started using interesting questions that probed for these commonly held misconceptions that students have and uh, started to build a collection and I was approached about writing a, a book and the first one came out in 2005 and what is it now over 200 probes later <laughs> they keep coming so it actually goes all the way back to when I was was a teacher and realizing how questions like that transform my teaching I wanted to do something similar for teachers Well, if you think about science, science is building an understanding of our natural world. And children actually do that from the time they are very young. They do it through play, they do it through their interaction in the natural world. So they're actually developing ideas and, and constructing their understandings of the way the natural world works long before they go to school. So here's an example. So a, a child plays outside and notices that uh, when a shadow is cast on, by an object that it blocks the light, the object blocks the light of the sun and forms this shadow. So when they look at the moon and they see the phases of the moon and there's a different part of the moon that they can see each night, the shadow conception makes sense to them because that's what they see every day through play is that an object that blocks light um, forms a shadow. So you see this dark part of the, the object and a lit part of the object and the part where the light is shining. So they use that um, experience to make sense of things like phases of the moon, which that, by the way, is a very common misconception in students that the phases of the moon is caused by the shadow of the earth cast on the moon. But you can see how it makes sense. So a lot of these misconceptions develop from everyday interaction with the natural world from the time children are very young. And unless they are challenged by teachers, they are tenacious, they remain all the way into adulthood. So that's why it's important to take the time to uncover students' preconceptions because they form early on and they follow students all the way into adulthood. Well, traditionally, teachers launch right into a lesson or an activity. Um, I think what the probes have done is help teachers take a step back and realize that before you launch into that lesson, into that activity, you need to take the time to find out where your students are, what they think, because that particular lesson, that particular activity might not be effective in helping students learn those important ideas. So I, th I think that's been a huge insight for teachers that taking the time up front to find out what your students think helps you make better decisions about the path that you're going to create to get students from where they are to where they need to be. And um, so that's part of the use of formative assessment is to inform instruction. There are a few probes that I call juicy questions. And they're juicy because 
you can squeeze a lot of ideas out of them. So for example, the chicken eggs. You know, if you found the mass of a chicken egg right after it was hatched and the chick develops inside and you find the mass again right before the chick pecks its way out of the egg, would the mass increase, decrease, or stay the same? And overwhelmingly, teachers will choose that it stays the same. And they're drawing upon um, a correct scientific principle, conservation of matter. But as you probe deeper, you also have to consider, is this an open or a closed system? What about the nature of the materials? Maybe an eggshell is porous. Um, what is the yolk used for? Some, you know, some teachers will think that the mass increases, which seems to make sense because you know, here you have this egg that was just laid with all this liquidy stuff inside, and here you have this fully formed chick, bones and feathers and beaks about to come out of the egg. So intuitively, it seems like the mass would be greater. But if you go back and think about the yolk and what food is and how food is transformed into living matter, and you think about transformation of matter, um, these are the kinds of probes that pull out multiple concepts that are important to understand in science. And by the way, I'm not going to tell you the answer to that because I think it would surprise you. It actually surprises teachers when they actually find out what the answer is. But that wasn't the point of that particular probe. The point of that probe is to draw out all those important concepts in order to be able to think about a question like this. And it's a juicy one.